Hey guys, it's JM. So I recently put together my budget build again after I had a motherboard fail. I bought a new motherboard and uh, resurrected this build and it was just been sitting in my garage off for the last couple weeks. So I decided to do a fun test. I also have lots of NVMe drives that are sitting in my garage, also not doing anything. So I thought it would be a fun test to basically take an eight core machine that I have, this kind of like budget build. The total budget build I wanted to have between like five and seven hundred dollars and be able to plot, you know, say four to five terabytes a day, which is a pretty lofty goal for a kind of low end system. Uh, but I have pitted this a bunch of different types of SSDs on this system to kind of profile it so I can make a better recommendation of kind of what SSD to recommend on this eight core machine. So now I have a much better feel for like what one instance of Mad Max with eight cores, uh, you know, kind of what SSD do you need to max that out. I looked at the list of SSDs I recommended about a year ago and actually surprisingly not as much has changed as I thought. There's been a ton of new consumer drives on the market, especially with the, like the Fizon E18 and the Micron 176 layer NAND that perform very, very well for PCIe Gen 4 consumer drives. But the same, same recommendation still stands in that consumer drives do not have the TBW that are required for chia plotting. Now, many people have found out, as I tried to explain before, that the rated TBW of consumer drives often is with the JEDEC client workload. Uh, I found out from Fizon and other partners that some of these other manufacturers basically just pick like a write amp of like one and a half or two to do their TBW. So that's a little bit disingenuous that uh, different vendors can have different types of TBW ratings in the consumer side for SSDs. In the data center world, all TBW rating is based off the JEDEC uh, data center workload. So it's kind of worst case write amp, which when your drive is full and doing tons of random workload, now, Chia plotting, it's actually pretty sequential. Uh, there's a little bit of random if, if you start multiplying and doing lots of multiple threads of Mad Max on top of a single drive. But uh, for the most part, and it's only 256 gigabytes. So on these like two terabyte drives or higher capacity drives, you're not using like the full capacity of the drive. So um, the, the endurance of these SSDs is gonna be much, much higher than it is on the rated TBW of the spec sheet. So, but you know, a consumer SSD, you can still only plot, you know, say, you know, 50 to a couple hundred terabytes before the drive wears out, where on these data center SSDs, you can plot uh, many, many petabytes of actual terabytes of, of, of plots uh, before the drive wears out. And we'll kind of explore some of that about some of these consumer models and why I think that it is much more important uh, to focus on data center SSDs. And we'll have a few examples of ones that I recommend. Um, of course, it's kind of fun. I had all these different generations of Intel drives. I had really the old school, the furry's first 2014 P3700 series, 400 gigabyte. This is like the first NVMe drive, all the way to the, the best and bleeding edge, the fastest drive in the world, the uh, Optane P5100X. So this was kind of a fun test to do just to kind of see what different results we would find on our uh, little budget build. All right, so the test procedure was fairly easy. I basically just uh, did an NVMe format, which completely wipes the drive. Uh, and then I did a MKFS of XFS, so if, and it, this will discard all the blocks and make sure it's kind of in a fresh state. I uh, mount the drive with discard, and then I basically run a Mad Max workload with uh, R of eight, so a threads of eight, and then using the drive as T1, T2, and the destination. So all the all the destinations is the same drive because it's just a benchmark. We're just we're not going to copy the final plot to a different drive uh, to make it easy, and then. I'm using, for my stack for monitoring, I'm using uh, Node Exporter with Prometheus on Grafana. And if you guys are interested, I can do a separate video of how to set that up. There's about a million different ways to set this up. Um, you know, so everybody's kind of got their method, but I have mine kind of dialed in now. But so if you zoom out here, you can see that now this is measured all the tests I've done over this period. So I did some tests, uh, this was overnight. And then, you know, I ran some tests before I went to bed and then I ran some tests uh, this morning. So um, I have kind of all the results here. I can kind of zoom in. Uh, and then I did two sets of drives and I'll, I'll uh, pan here to a picture of this setup. This is basically just a bench top system. It has a i7-10700. This was the budget build value pick for the best, you know, bang for your buck CPU to as output uh, that I could find. And uh, about a year ago when I built the budget build, it still actually performs pretty good, uh, about, about the same as uh, obviously a little bit better with Mad Max and higher performance SSDs now, uh, but it is still very good performance CPU for the cost. I think there's maybe some, some slightly better picks for that $300 range we can kind of look at, but 
the uh, and then you know we have this. I have this PCIe switch card that can hook up eight different NVMe drives, and then it just takes as input SATA power. So uh, again, this is just a nice way to hook up a bunch of U.2 drives in a desktop. It's very hard to do it in a PC case because PC cases are not built for a bunch of U.2s that you need uh, better cooling for than a PC case can can handle. But so if we zoom in here, it's very cool. You can kind of see exactly for the different Mad Max workloads. And by the way, it's funny. I actually found a bug in node exporter that I reported to the development team during this. I'm using all the latest betas of node exporter in Prometheus and Grafana. So I, I did find some uh, one bug that I reported to them, which was incorrectly reporting um, the bandwidth on 4K line, uh, 4K sector size disks, which uh, they have fixed since I made this video. Uh, but Okay, so you can see here on the CPU, uh, what we're looking for in when you're trying to max out a system with Mad Max, you know, you really want 100% CPU across all different, uh, you know, across all times. Then you'll you'll get the max output of the system. Well, well, with one Mad Max, it's very hard to do that because phase one, you're very CPU bound. You're almost not going to get any benefit of running the CPU higher. Uh, maybe if we had a you know, infinite SSD speed, we would maybe get to like 80% CPU. You know, it just never uses quite 100%. Um, and then you can see the phase two and three, and then the four is the final phase where they're just buttoning, it every, uh, buttoning the plot up. Um, phase two and three are very, very disk bound, but there's a lot of IO going on. So there's a lot of sorting going on. You're dropping entries. Uh, so basically when you see the red here, that's IO weight. Mad Max just dumps a bunch of data to the disk and um, it tries to move these buckets back and forth between DRAM. And there's a lot of IO going on the drive. You can see it's very predictable. These are three different drives, three different runs, and they all look very, very similar. Um, so on a perfect drive, you know, you would say you would see no IO weight and then basically to get the best Mad Max performance out of a system, you'd probably want to have two instances going on or you do a phase one stagger because phase one is the most CPU intensive. Um, so for this system, I just did one at a time just to do a nice easy test. Uh, you can kind of see the disk bandwidth up here for one drive. It kind of peaks, you know, a little maybe I think it gets all the way up to about 1.4. Uh, I guess we can kind of see here max bandwidth average and current so you can see over this time period um you know this drive hit about 1.09 gigabytes per second so it's not like uh for one, this one hit 1.29 gigabytes a second this one hit 1.5 1 1.5 um in the peak this average is over about five seconds so it's actually a little bit better than that um but this is a nice way to kind of view what's going on and i use this when i'm tuning a system for mad max like to figure out how do i get the max cpu lowest IO weight, how do you match the, the right number of drives to the system? Uh, so well, for this case, you know, basically I'm just showing, I had, you know, these are not, um, these picks of drives, these are just basically what I had laying around in the house, in the garage. So um, I'm just basically testing these and then I'm gonna make a hypothesis about the best value budget build uh, based off some of these results that I can, now that I have some data, I can maybe make some good recommendations. Um, so. Basically, the most expensive drive, P5800X, this is you know $3,500 for 1.6 terabytes. Uh, this is not a good pick for your budget build, but I wanted to see what the fastest NVMe drive on the planet looked like on this A-Core. Now, this is a PCIe Gen 3 system, so this is only running at Gen 3 speeds, but it shouldn't affect the plotting very much. As you saw, we're not, PC, we're not going past PCIe Gen 3 by 4 speeds, which is about 3.5 gigabytes per second. So over here on the left, you know, we look at... Uh, Time, k equals 32 for the total plot time in seconds versus drive. Our P5100 is the winner. The next was the, you know, the Fizon SLC drive, the uh, the uh, PNY LX3030, I believe is their uh, product name for that. Um, now, unfortunately, uh, you know, again, this is the Chi optimized plotting drive. This drive is awesome for plotting, uh, but it's a little bit on the expensive side as well. The two terabyte is about, I think 1169 was their retail MSRP and one terabyte was about half that, I think like 500 bucks. So it's still a little bit pricey, but it does very well. It's 54 petabytes of endurance of, you know, so I've calculated you can at least do about 6.8 uh, petabytes of plot before the drive wears out, which is probably a bit on the overkill side for most people. But uh, the next ones were surprising. So I, P5510 has been kind of like my bread and butter pick for, I have one right here. Uh, this has been my bread and butter pick for uh, plotting SSDs since since mainnet launched. And in the beginning, when we had GPOS, you needed high capacity drives to run a bunch of workloads parallel. Uh, you know, this drive does 4.2 gigabytes a second sequential write, uh, you know, 7 gigabytes a second sequential read, PCI Gen 4. So when you give it a really big workload, it does really well. Uh, it also has really good trim time, which which makes a big difference in these plotting performance. Um, 
Now, I'm actually surprised here, uh, you know, with just one workload to it, it you know, this drive is not shining as, as much as it should uh, because we're actually seeing similar results on the PM983, which is like Samsung's uh, PCIe Gen 3 uh, NVMe. And this this 3.84 terabyte drive, I, I think I got it for 350 bucks or something like that on eBay. Um, you know, I did a recent search of it, but you can get these 960 gig PM983 M.2s for 90 bucks. Yeah, two terabyte version, 160 bucks. You can get the U.2 uh, or the uh, M.2. So this is, uh, it's been a, one of the value picks that I picked since the beginning. Um, just because it's all around decent SSD and um, you know it's used in hyperscale data centers. But uh, this has the same controller as the 970 and 970 Pro. And again, the 980 Pro, uh, the Samsung 980 Pro has the Ellipsis controller. That's the same controller as the PM983, the Ellipse controller. And that's uh, the PM983 is uh, Samsung PCIe Gen 4 drive. So that's a little bit more expensive. But again, that has the same controller as the 980 Pro, but better endurance, uh, power loss protection, and then doesn't have the SLC cache. So it's much, much better for plotting. So if you do, if you are plotting and you need, you need an M.2, I would highly recommend you still get a data center M.2, 110 millimeter. Uh, they're much, much better than these consumer drives. And they're about the same price. If you look on eBay or PM983, I mentioned, or PM983, you know, this is maybe slightly more expensive than a 980 Pro because the 980 Pro is on sale uh, decent, but uh, it's a much better drive because it's just higher performance, no caching, uh, and you get three times the endurance. So for plotting, it's a no brainer. You definitely want the data center version of these, these Samsung drives. So that one does very well. Um, you know, what was surprising, so, you know, kind of mid-level pick, P4510 has always been, a, you know, a good pick for, of mine. Uh, and that does, this two terabyte uh, is a great pick because you can find them on eBay super cheap. The one terabytes are like 120 bucks and the two terabytes are, you, I just I just saw one up there today for 219 bucks on eBay today. Um, you know, 2.6 petabytes of random endurance. And then, you know, so with sequential and plots, I, I calculated you can do about 738 terabytes of plots, uh, you know, before this drive wears out. So, you know, for the mainstream pick for a budget build, 200 bucks, I think that's, this is kind of the right, the right fit we're looking for. So if you, if you find a P4610, the only one I had laying around to do the test was a 3.2 terabyte, which is a little bit more expensive. That's about 500 bucks. But um, the 1.6 terabyte should be about the same price, about 200 bucks. Uh, so if you can find a P4610, 1.6 terabyte or P4510, two terabyte, those are good picks along with the Samsung PM983 or PM983 if you can find the, the right price. Oh, any of these data center drives that are, you know, two, 960 gigabyte, two terabyte will be a good fit. Uh, much, much better than any of these consumer drives uh, for plotting. Again, the consumer drives can plot plenty fast. 980 Pro is great for plotting as far as performance, but, you know, you know your endurance, uh, you're gonna wear out the drive. Um, remember, if you looked at these same, remember 980 Pro and PM983 have the same controller, exactly the same controller, uh, but the PM983 has three times the endurance, so if you look at the total number of plots you can do from a PM983 on the two terabyte, you can do about 1.2 petabytes. And then on the four terabyte, you can do about uh, 2.5 petabytes uh, before this drive wears out. I think this is the actual plots and terabytes. The TBW is seven petabytes written on the 3.84 terabyte and 3.5 petabytes written on the uh, 1.92. So yeah, it's again, three times the endurance, the 980 Pro, two terabytes only. Um, it's only uh, 1200 TBW. So you should definitely do that. So a budget build, you know, I said for this budget build that can do, um, let's see, I think the peak was about 4.8 uh, terabytes a day. And for a $200 price point, you could do about four terabytes a day, 4.1 terabytes a day, 4.2 terabytes a day. Uh, so this is a pretty good little budget build for 700 bucks. I think you could, you know, I bought the motherboard for 100 bucks. You can find these CPUs easily on eBay for 200 bucks. Even on Newegg, they're in Amazon. They're only 250 new, brand new. You know, 32 gigs of DRAM, 120 bucks. Uh, case, if you want to throw a $50 case in there, that's fine. Um, I just have them laying on a bench right now. But, and then you know, 200 bucks for the SSD. This is a reasonable pick. And then now you have a $700 system that can plot, you know, hundreds of terabytes of data for plotting and do it at you know four terabytes a day. It's a pretty nice little pick for people that are trying to get into plotting. So um, I'll do some more of these, these build guides, but uh, again, this was kind of fun just to uh, benchmark. Now, the only surprising results on here were my old P4610, a 1.6 terabyte, and my P3700, my 400 uh, gigabyte. They didn't do so, so well, which is kind of surprising. Um, 
you know, they didn't do as good as I thought. I thought the P4600 would be a little bit better uh, than, or not, you know, not such a big difference on this eight core machine, but it's actually a pretty big difference. You know, 2300 seconds to on the P4610, which is, this is that, which is the, uh, you know, 64 layer uh, PCIe Gen 3 from Intel. And the P4600 was the very first 3D NAND from Intel. Uh, I'm very familiar with this product, of course. Uh, so yeah, I was surprised that this time was so much. Um, you know, the, the thing that surprised me, I, I, I threw this one, this was the only consumer drive I had laying around. Um, you know, I'll grab some more consumer drives again off eBay. I had I had a bunch laying around and then I, I sold them, I think, after the plotting craziness. But uh, this is just a 50, 500 gigabyte boot drive. I use a ton of these for boot drives. They're the SK Hynix uh, gold P31s. You know, they're 50 bucks on Amazon. So they're super cheap. Even the one terabytes go on sale for 80 bucks, uh, something like that. So, uh, you know, they have 300 TBW on this thing. So not great, right? You can maybe do 42 terabytes of floss before this thing wears out. Uh, so yeah, they're only 50 bucks. Please do not plot on the consumer drives. Uh, they actually, performance was better than I thought. You know, 2900 seconds, which was about the same as an old P3700, uh, which basically has infinite endurance. You know, 7.2 petabytes written on a 400 gig drive is insane. Uh, you know, 1.1 petabytes of plots on this little tiny 400 gig drive. But uh, yeah, this one was uh, surprising. So. Yeah, again, when you're when you're choosing a plotting SSD, you want good performance and you want enough endurance to pl make sure you plot as much as you can plot, uh, you know, before the drive wears out. And then you can sell the drive. You know, if, if you buy a new drive and plot with it, you know, it's an enterprise drive, you can resell that drive just fine. If you buy a consumer drive and plot with it and then you wear out all the endurance, you're going to have a hard time reselling that. So, uh, yeah, again, uh, let me know if you guys enjoyed this. I thought it was pretty fun, um, basically, to... As you can see here, I just graphed the endurance and total number of terabytes you can plot before the drive wears out, which uh, I believe the P5100X has the lead with uh, 20 petabytes of plots before this drive wears out. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you thought this was nice, uh, I'm going to maybe do something similar on a higher end system with uh, lots more cores to find out. It's a little bit trickier, obviously, because Mad Max software starts to bottleneck and you need to run multiple in parallel to get the max performance out of a system. But uh, this is a nice way to, to get some good data on uh, the budget build pick. So again, my budget build pick, uh, again, P4510 or P4610 or PM983 or PM983. Uh, those are good ones. There's other uh, enterprise SSDs that I'll list that are good in this kind of price range. But there's a ton of stuff on eBay right now on that $200 price point you can find for used enterprise drives. So, all right. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye.